Hi, I'm Stephen Gregg again, and I'm here still at the Westin. I just wanted to throw another video out there for you and give you um, what happened next. You know, you, we just talked a little bit about um, my, my story, and, and this is my life story, which is um, the, the mindset of a trailblazer. Sorry for all the background noise. I'm here at a hotel, so you may hear some background noise, but I just want you to understand that the mindset of a trailblazer is the name of my, my life story. And I want to talk to you about a pivot point, because in 1997, there was a pivot point in my life. See, I had joined a business um, back then uh, with a, uh, that company I told you about um, that was with Kevin Trudeau. So Kevin Trudeau was the guy who had those mega memory tapes. Remember, I had listened to years before. And then years later, I had joined a network marketing business with him. And that's where I met Chris McGarrahan, my mentor. And these guys had started training me and they started mentoring me and I started learning from them. And man, it was amazing how much stuff I was learning. It was unbelievable. And they were teaching me how to build the business. They were teaching me what to do and how to do it so I can really grow my business. And this was the first time I was really getting the experience that I needed. And so what ended up happening, they were starting to teach me the skill sets. I was starting to make some money in the business. Um, the business started working. I started learning the lessons that I needed. And so finally, I started getting some momentum and some traction. But then in 1997, a pivot point came. Because I remember I was doing a, a, a meeting with Chris. Um, Chris was having a big event at the Hilton Hotel. And I went to lunch. I went to the lunch break and I went over to McDonald's. Now, I don't eat McDonald's now, but I definitely went to McDonald's that day. And when I was there, I was sitting there eating, minding my own business. And a guy named John uh, Verghese came up to me and said, don't I know you from somewhere? And I was like, no, I don't think you know me from anywhere. Where at? And he goes, um, don't I know you from this or that? And he just started talking to me. And I was like, no, nah, I don't think so. And so he sat down and we started talking. He goes, um, he started inviting me to church. And I was like, okay, well, what church do you go to? And he told me the name of the church. It was a church out here in Orange County. And he said, this week they're having a park service. It's going to be at a park in the city of Orange. And there's going to be fun. There's going to be food. We're going to be playing volleyball. There's going to be girls there, young girls. I said, wait a minute. Food? Fun? Girls? Absolutely. I'm in. Let's do it. So I said, absolutely, I'll go. So I went back to the training and then I actually went and I um, went to the church service that Sunday. And it was pretty cool because it was a fun time, man. It was all these young girls there. And it was, I mean, I felt like I was in heaven on earth. And so I said, I'm in, man. I want to join this church. This sounds like it looks like a church for me. He goes, yeah, that's cool. But, you know, we got to start studying the Bible first. And I was like, great, let's do it. Let's set it up right now. So we did. So we set up a Bible study. And after we set up that Bible study, you know, it took about a month or so, a month and a half. I went through a whole series of studies about character, about who I was, about sin, and about baptism, about what you know it looks like to really be a disciple of Jesus. And it was interesting because after about a month and a half, there came a point where something happened. I, you know, I was scared because I was a very insecure man at the time. So they wanted me to get in front of the, of the church and talk about some different things in my life. And I was scared, so I ran. And I ran for about two months. And then after two months, you know, I decided, you know, I want to go back and talk to John again. So I found John again, and we started studying the Bible again. We went through the whole study series all over again. And then it was a, a this was the pivot point. I remember it vividly. There was a time where Kevin had created an event in Palm Springs called Leadership Weekend, where they were going to start teaching all the systems of duplication, the same types of things I teach now in business. But that was a weekend I was going to learn this information. And it was the same weekend that John wanted me to go to an event with the church. So I had a pivot point. Do I go follow Kevin, my idol, or do I go towards God at the church? And I had to make a decision. It was a hard decision, but you know, I made it. I went to Kevin and I went to Leadership Weekend in Palm Springs. And I remember that weekend, I learned so much that weekend. It was unbelievable what I had to learn. I mean, I learned so much information and it was powerful. And it changed my life. My business started growing. I started um, promoting into the company. It started getting bigger and bigger and bigger. And it was a really interesting situation that happened because after I went, went to Leadership Weekend, I started learning how to teach it. I started learning how to train it. And for the next two years, I didn't see John. I didn't see him at all. And I went and I built the network marketing business. And I really mastered the skill. I sat at Chris McGarrahan's feet every single week at the uh, at the Hilton Hotel we have a 30 Thursday meeting and I would sit at his feet and I would take notes with white paper and blue ink and I would take those notes and I would become a student of of Chris and I was learning and learning and learning from that guy and Kevin Trudeau everything he talked about I learned I mastered it I got it down pat and then something else happened it was a trip because in 2000 I mean 1999 you know life took a turn uh, I started, um, me and Malcolm were living, at, living together, we were having a time together here at the house, we were 
um, and we were just friends, um, of course, living together. And I was dating this girl, and it was tough because, you know, I had a, still had character issues. And I was still out partying all the time. And I started to get really, really down again. And I was dating this girl, and when I started dating this girl, um, you know, it was tough because we, we didn't get along very well. So she had this cat, and she had to move out. I kept the cat. His name was Reese's. I love Reese's. He, stayed, he was alive till 18 years old. But after that, my buddy, like I said, Malcolm, moved in with me. And, you know, we were friends, and we were good friends and stuff. And then um, I started dating this other girl. And when I dated this other girl, um, you know, the relationship was fine. But during that same time, I remember I had pretty much went broke. You know, the business was doing well, but for some reason my character, because I was still out spending money, going partying, doing all the character things that didn't change all those years. And I remember one time, me and Malcolm, we were staying together at one time, and we were living in this apartment, and I remember, it was kind of funny, we had to go to a McDonald's and split a hamburger that cost a dollar, because that's all we had. We got up, bought one hamburger, split it in half, and had each a half a hamburger. Um, and there was another time, it was a funny story, um, one time we were doing some business, we were trying to sell some advertising, Malcolm was making the calls, I was running to the appointment because we only had one car. So, he, I, you know, our electricity got turned out. So I was like, dude, you got to get ready, we got we to gotta get going. He goes, well, how am I going to iron my clothes? My clothes are all wrinkled. I said, dude, you got to do what you got to do. So I left, went to the store, and came back, and Malcolm had the ironing board in the hallway of the apartment complex, ironing his clothes. And I was like, dude, what you doing? He goes, I'm doing what I got to do. I was like, well, hey man, let's do it, let's go. And so it was just a funny time, because we were so broke. I mean, we had nothing, we had nothing. But, but you know what we did have, we had fun. Yeah, I, can, I can tell you that. So it was just an interesting situation, because we used to go out partying and dancing, but then um, the challenging time came. Again, I started to get depressed again, because I started dating this girl named Gabby. And I remember very, very clear, clearly, I really enjoyed this girl, I really liked her a lot. And I thought she was the one, she had a couple kids and you know, we started, you know, we were together and it was a great time, but I remember this vividly. It was a really challenging time because she broke my heart again. She broke my heart. I mean, we, it was a Thursday, I remember I was sitting at home and she broke up with me. And you know, it was probably right around that Christmas time again, you know, several times over Christmas time, I had bad relationship situations happen to me and because of that, you know, I was, I was down again. I was depressed. I didn't know what to do. And so I was just sitting there thinking, man, what, what's my next step? What am I going to do next? You know, I'm sick of this. I started drinking a lot, started partying a lot, even more. Malcolm was living at the house. So I was just down and discouraged. I didn't know what to do. And I'm going to tell you right now, in relationships, if you don't have your character on straight, if you don't have things on, on, on properly, you know, bad relationships can ruin you if you allow it to. And I did. I allowed those relationships. I allowed my idolization of Kevin and Chris. I allowed money and greed and, and financial success to ruin me. Because I still hadn't dealt with me yet. You know, I still knew that I had character cracks that needed to be sealed. So what I'm going to do is on my next video, you know, I, I, I'm going to tell you uh, what happened. Because it's an amazing transformation from this point on. And so I just want you to, you know, subscribe to my channel. Subscribe and click the little bell button there and you know you can get all the videos that we sh I shoot but I just want you to know that you know your past doesn't equal your future I think I may have said that before your past does not equal your future because I thought my future was done at this point I was sick and tired I was really tired at that point I had broke up with, had so many bad relationships during the Christmas time I hated that time of the year and so what ended up happening is things changed for the better and I'm gonna tell you in a minute what those things were I'm telling my next video because I believe that what happened from this point on got it intervened and it became I became a different person life changed exponentially so again thank you for watching the mindset of a trailblazer that's the name of my videos and I mean this has been tough just even sharing this message from heart to heart with you but I can't wait to tell you the next part because it's been unbelievable what's been going on. So I'm going to share it with you. I'll be back here in a moment uh, to give you the next video. Talk to you soon.